Have you ever finished knitting a sweater only to find yourself excited to cast on for a similar one right away? If so, you are in for a treat with the Mellow Mood sweater. It's stylish yet simple, that kind that just might inspire your next knitting project. This top-down raglan design is the type of sweater that beginners often start with, and the ribbit lines that cascade down its length not only enhance its style, but are also quite easy to remember after just a couple of rounds. Wouldn't it be great if you could knit effortlessly without constantly needing to check instructions for every round? Imagine watching the fabric rapidly grow on your needles. It's like a knitting dream, right? And what if I told you that you can try on your sweater and make any adjustments as you go? Does that spark your curiosity? If any of these ideas have you nodding yes, you will surely enjoy knitting this sweater. This video is here to simplify your mellow mood sweater knitting experience, and you can take the PDF copy on my Etsy store or on Ravelry, because you need to choose your size. Speaking of Ravelry, if you are curious about how the mellow mood sweater looks in different yarns, colors, or maybe various body types, take a look at inspiring photos shared by talented knitters on their project pages. Some were so thrilled with the design, they made even too, same as I did. In the description below you will find the link to these photos as well as the essential information about gauge, yarn, needles and more. Everything you need to know about the Mellow Mood sweater is right there. And if you have a question just leave a comment and I will be right there to answer. So how do we knit this sweater? We start with the neck and you get to choose crew neck or cozy turtle neck. It's up to you. Next, we will move on to the yoke, increasing stitches every other round, and you will be amazed at how quickly your knitted fabric takes shape. I will also demonstrate how to shape the neckline with the simplest short rows you have ever made. The sleeves mark the final stage of this project, so we will set them aside and concentrate on the body in the round. And we will reach to the bottom ribbing. It's the same pattern we use for the neck. And only task remaining is the sleeves. We knit them in the round, forming decreases for shaping as we approach the cuffs. This top-down sweater is definitely beginner-friendly, but it's fair to say it might be a bit challenging if it's your very first sweater project. To make this pattern as easy and effortless as possible, I, along with an amazing team of test knitters, spent hours and days refining the instructions and ensuring the perfect fit for each size from XS to 3XL. So, if you have never knitted a sweater before, but you are up for a little adventure, I invite you to join me in knitting this sweater. And if you like this design and will find the tutorial helpful, please let me know by giving it a thumbs up. Guess what happened next? My husband asked me to make him the same sweater. Yes, I was thrilled, because usually he is not too keen on my designs, you know? Now he is my biggest fan and the motivation behind creating the men's version of this sweater. Make sure you don't miss out when it will be released, I hope it will. <laughs> so. Subscribe to my channel Knit with Essenique and hit the notification bell. Okay, why wait any longer? Grab the PDF pattern, because you need to know how many stitches to cast on. And while you watch this video, keep an eye on the right upper corner for links that will take you to in-depth video tutorials for some specific techniques. It can be a real game changer if you want to explore a particular skill further. Okay, let's dive right into it and start with the neck. So here our knitting adventure begins. Start by casting on the required number of stitches for your size. Using 4.5 mm, this is US 7 circular needles with a shorter cable length. If you don't have 40 cm cable length, you can use the magic loop technique. Quickly watch the video from the link provided above and then come back to us. Add one extra stitch for a seamless join in the round. Once you've got your stitches on the needles, join them in the round. Be careful not to twist the stitches. Place beginning of the round marker. Now you get to decide how you want your sweater to look. If you like the classic crew neck like the beige sweater, go with 10 rounds of ribbing. But if you are in the mood of cozy turtleneck like I'm going to knit in this video, walk 40 rounds. It's perfect choice for those who don't use scarves. Time for 2x2 two two ribbing. Just knit 2 stitches, then curl 2 stitches and keep going like that until you reach the end of the round. And here's the first helpful tip. After the second knit stitch, give the next purl stitch a little snack tag. This keeps your ribbon nice and even. 
Now, for round 2 and all other rounds after that, you just do the same thing you did in the round 1. Knit the knit stitches and purl the purl stitches. That's it for the neck part. We are doing awesome. I like to keep track of my progress with the checklist in the knitting project planner I designed it for this sweater, top-down reglan. It's right there in your PDF knitting pattern, or if you want one for yourself, you can find it in my Etsy store. It will keep you organized, super motivated and right on track. We have laid the foundation and now it's time for the yoke section. Round zero, set up round. For this round we will setting up and placing stitch markers for reglan lines. We need to switch to the 5.5 mm needles with 40 cm cable length, or this is US 9 needles and 16 inches cable length. I don't have a cable of this length, so I will use the magic loop technique. Now we have uh, the larger needle in our right hand and we can start knitting. Knit 10 stitches for the first reglan line. Place marker number one, then knit X stitches for your size for the back. Place marker number two. Next, knit 10 stitches for the second reglan line. And place marker number 3. Knit X stitches for the right sleeve. Place marker number 4. Continue with knitting 10 stitches for the third reglan line. Then place marker number 5. Knit X stitches for the front. Place marker number 6. Finally, knit 10 stitches for the fourth and last reglan line. Place marker number 7 and knit X stitches for the left sleeve. Setup round is done and back the beginning of the round marker. Round 1. In this round we will be working on increases and ribbing the reglan lines. Start by working 10 reglan stitches as knit 2, purl 2. Then slip marker and make one stitch left. To make this increase, pick up the strand between the last stitch you need and the next one from the front and knit it from the back loop. I help myself with a needle and move it from the front to back, which makes it easier to knit the stitch through the back loop. Then knit all stitches to the next marker, the back part. and make one stitch right. To do this, pick up the strand between the last stitch you need and the next one from the back. Insert the right needle 
into the lifted strand from the left to right and knit. Yes, it may seem a bit challenging at first, but this is the basic knit stitch for increases. With a little practice, you will master it in just a few rounds. Slip marker. Work 10 reglan stitches with knit 2 purl 2. Slip marker and make one left. Knit to the next marker for the first slip. Make one right. Slip marker, work 10 stitches for the reglan line, with need to purl 2. Slip marker, make one left. Knit to the next marker for front stitches. Make one right. Slip marker. Work 10 reglan stitches. Slip marker. Make one left. Need to marker for the second sleeve. Make one right. We have just increased 8 stitches, adding one stitch to each side of the 4 raglan lines. That's the beauty of the raglan sweater. For round 2 you are for a treat, simply knit all stitches. Continue repeating these two rounds until you reach the necessary length for your size, as indicated in the knitting pattern. As you progress with more rounds of Mellow Mood Sweater and increase for the York Reglan, you will find that you need longer circular needles, but not for the Magic Loop technique, I already have the longest cable. If you started with 40 cm 16 inches cable length, you should switch to an 80 or 100 cm as your stitch count grows. Simply start knitting with the new needle in your right hand. Here's a few small but handy tips. Add a new skein of yarn at the center of a raglan line. This can help prevent visible knots in the middle of the stockinette stitch fabric and make weaving in the ends much easier.
You use a knitting lifeline. This technique involves threading a piece of yarn through your life stitches, allowing you to unravel a small section of your work if necessary and easily put those stitches back on your needle. To insert a lifeline, use a tapestry needle with a contrasting strand of a thin waist yarn and pass it through the life stitches. You can also move or replace the lifeline as needed to review your work and spot mistakes early. After knitting approximately 15 cm or 6 inches following the ribbing, slip half of the stitches onto a scrap yarn with a tapestry needle or other needles if you have them. Then try on your knitted piece. Keep in mind that the neck will become more open as you add length for, for the back. If you are not a fan of the woolly feel against your skin or if you have sensitive skin, no worries, you can actually make the neckline deeper to suit your comfort. I've got a handy post in my Raverly project for the Mellow Mood sweater that explains exactly how to do this. Just check the video description below for the link. Control point number one. The yoke part is almost done and at this control point check how many stitches you have and compare with the numbers in the pattern. You should have the exact amount of stitches for the reglan lines because this is the attractive part of this sweater. But if you have a few more or fewer stitches for the back, front or sleeves, that's perfectly fine. No worries if you have accidentally missed a few stitches like I did. I need one stitch for the back and one stitch for the left sleeve. Since I am at the end of the round, it's easy to fix. I simply increase one stitch for the sleeve and when it comes to the back part, I just increase one stitch in the next round and voila, I will have the right number of stitches. It's all about a bit of improvisation. <laughs> all right, what to do if you have followed the instructions but didn't get the result you expected? If you have the required number of stitches but your regular line is too short, it means your knitting tension differs from mine. It's okay. In this case, knit a few more rounds without increases until you reach the desired length for the reglan lines. Another possible issue. You have the required number of stitches, but your reglan line is too long. Unravel a few rounds and make increases in every new round instead of every other round. This way you will achieve the necessary stitch count and the reglan line will become shorter. The good news is that this modification, increasing in every round at the end of the yoke, will provide a better fit for your sweater. If the number of stitches still doesn't match, make the necessary length of the reglan line and continue knitting. It doesn't matter how many stitches you have in stocking at stitch. What matters most is the reglan lines. I will then tell you how to achieve the required number of stitches for the sweater's bottom ribbing. Remember, unraveling and starting again is perfectly normal in knitting. Even I may unravel my new designs a few times to achieve their best fit. We have dealt with the possible problems in control point number one, so let's shape the neckline. We are at the beginning of the round and ready to knit the next round with increases. However, instead of increases, we will be adding 10 rows to the back section, spanning from one reglan line to another. These are simply a few rows back and forth at the back of the sweater to ensure it fits nicely on your shoulders and the neckline doesn't uncomfortably press against your neck. I'll show you how to achieve a good fit, definitely better than if you were to skip them. And then you can start experimenting with German short rows, understanding what they are and why we use them. Row 1 on the right side. Begin by slipping the begin of the round marker and then work 10 reglan stitches according to the pattern. After that, knit all stitches for the back until you reach the next marker. And finally, work the 10 reglan stitches.
I recommend to purl the last stitch and slip the first stitch knitwise to create a knit edge. Later in the sleeve section we will pick up stitches for the sleeves from this spot. And row 2 on the wrong side. Now turn your work and simply purl all the stitches on this row. For a smoother stocking and stitch fabric I use a needle that's one size smaller and I begin by slipping the first stitch knitwise. Repeat rows 1 and 2 4 more times, which will give us a total of 10 rows. Ready! And as I promised, it was simply. You are once again at the beginning of the round and ready to knit the next round. Prepare a tapestry needle with a piece of scrap yarn for the sleeves. Begin this round with the regular stitches and that's knit 2, purl 2, knit 2, purl 2. It's time to say goodbye to all those markers we have been using along the way. Remove them as you go. Next, knit all stitches for the back piece. Follow that up with 10 regular stitches, keeping the pattern going. and gently slip those slip stitches onto the scrap yarn. This ensures they are safe while we work on the rest of the sweater. We need to cast on stitches for the underarm. The number of stitches you will cast on depends on your sweater size. To keep it simple, I recommend using the backwards loop cast on method. It's easier and effective. Continue with 10 regular stitches and to ensure a snug fit and avoid any unsightly holes, be sure to tighten the first stitch after casting on. and knit all stitches for the front piece. Then walk 10 raglan stitches. And now it's time to slip the other sleeve stitches onto the scrap yarn. Finally, cast on stitches for the other underarm, just like we did before.
We have now placed the stitches for both sleeves on scrap yarn, leaving us with four regular lines, the back and front pieces on the needles in the round, and cast it on stitches for the underarms. After dividing, we are once again at the beginning of the round and ready to work the reglan line and the back. Round 1. Work the first 10 stitches for the reglan line, which means knit 10 stitches. Place a marker to separate the reglan line from the back. Knit X stitches for your size for the back up to the next reglan line. Place a marker to indicate where the back piece ends. Now, walk 10 stitches for the reglan line, knit 10 stitches. Then, knit the casted on underarm stitches. After that, work another 10 stitches for the reglan line. And place a marker to separate the ribbon pattern from the front. Continue by knitting X stitches for the front up to the third reglan line. Place a marker. Work the reglan line with uh, knit 10. Knit the underarm stitches. And finally, place the beginning of the round marker. Round 2. Begin by working 10 reglan stitches according to the pattern. Then knit X stitches for the back up to the next marker that identifies the next reglan line. Now walk the reglan line with knit 2, purl 2, as we did before. After we have the casted on underarm stitches, work them in 2x2 two two rib pattern by repeating Curl two stitches, knit two stitches. Continue with reglan line by knit two, purl two, knit two. Then it's time to knit all stitches for the front. And the 10 reglan stitches again in the pattern knit to purl two. Finally, work the casted on underarm stitches in two by two rib pattern by purl two knit two. At this point, you will have a 2x2 two two ribbing pattern from the first reglan line, including the underarm, to the second reglan line. Round 3. In this round, simply knit all stitches.
Now let's check our progress. We have four distinct parts separated by stitch markers. The first 2x2 two two ribbing section, the back piece, the second 2x2 two two ribbing section and the front piece. Repeat rounds 2 and 3 a few more times, approximately 6 more rounds or until you have reached 10 cm or 4 inches in length. The only difference between rounds 2 and 3 is the use of garter stitch in the ribbing. Clip half of the stitches onto a scrap yarn or onto another needles. And try on the knitted piece. If you are satisfied with how the sweater fits you, continue repeating rounds 2 and 3 until the length from the armhole matches that's mentioned in the knitting pattern. But what if your sweater is too tight or too wide? Here are some solutions. If it's too wide, you have two options. The first one, the easiest way is to start over and knit a smaller size. Yes. Alternatively, you can decrease the necessary number of rounds and re-knit them to reach the required length and stitch count as specified in the knitting pattern. If the sweater is too tight in the chest but perfect in the armholes, unravel under the dividing part and work additional 2-4 rounds if increases, but only for the back and front, don't make increases in the sleeves. Feel free to make these simple adjustments and continue with the pattern using your customized numbers. The stitch count is crucial only for the side ribbing pattern, not for the back or front stockinette stitch. You just will need to increase or decrease the stitch count to match the bottom ribbing and that's it. Also, if you are unsure about the sleeve fit, you can put the body stitches on hold, slip them onto a scrap yarn and skip to the sleeve section to start forming the sleeves. If the sleeves are too large, you may need to adjust the yoke section. It's time to try on your knitted piece and make any necessary adjustments. If you would like some extra length, now is the perfect time to do so. Keep in mind that we will be adding an 8 cm or 3 inch ribbing at the bottom of the mellow mood sweater. Now let's proceed to finish the body with a 2x2 ribbed bottom, just as we did for the neck. To achieve this, we need to make sure the stitch count for both the back and front sides is divisible by 4 plus 2 stitches to match the ribbed pattern. If your stitch count doesn't align with the pattern, feel free to add or decrease the necessary stitches using the method like make one left or make one right or decrease the uh, knit two together or slip slip knit. For the setup round, begin by working the first 10 stitches in the 2x2 rib pattern. In this last round, before the bottom ribbing, I am switching to 4.5 mm this is your 7 needles for a smooth transition. I need size M, so I already have the necessary number of stitches, but some other sizes need to randomly decrease two stitches before reaching the next marker. The easiest way is to slip slip knit in the start and knit two together in the end of stockinette stitch. Alternatively, make your oven adjustments to reach the required stitch count. Now continue to the 2x2 two two rib section. And once again, if it is necessary for a size, randomly decrease two stitches before reach the next marker. Keep knitting in 2 by 2 rib pattern until you reach the beginning of the round marker. Now switch to the 4.5 mm US 7 needles, if you didn't do this before, and dive into a 2 by 2 rib for the next 20 rounds. As you go, remove all stitch markers except the beginning of the round marker, which is essential for reference. During these 20 rounds, keep it simple with the pattern knit two together, purl two together for all your stitches. Yes, we are switching from the gutter stitch rib and starting to knit the regular 2x2 rib stitch, just like we did for the neck. It's time to try on your knitted piece one more. Put it on and check how it feels and fits. 
we are almost there. For the final step, cast off the stitches loosely using your preferred method. I personally prefer the simplest one. We have finished the body part. Now all that's left is to knit the two sleeves, do some that blocking and your sweater will be ready to keep you cozy on chilly days. Sleeve time! Let's dive into knitting them. First, slip the stitches from the scrap yarn back onto your 5.5mm 40cm circular needles. This is US 9 and 60 inches. If you don't have the size of circular needles, don't worry, you can use the magic loop technique for the entire sleeve, it's a great alternative. You will find a tutorial link above to guide you through it. Next, we will pick up stitches along the armhole, here's how to do it. Pick up one stitch before the custom stitches for the underarm to prevent any holes. If you notice any potential holes, feel free to pick up a few more stitches. Just remember to decrease them in the next round using either knit two together or slip slip knit. Pick up the stitches that were cast on for the underarm. Again, pick up one stitch before the short rows to prevent a hole. Lastly, pick up 5 stitches from the additional back length. Remember those 10 extra short rows we needed for the back. The stitches are from there. Now, knit all these stitches and place the beginning of the round marker in the middle of the underarm. This marker signifies the new beginning of the round. Then necessary, add a new skein of yarn near the beginning of the round marker. We will be kneading in stocking a stitch, knit all rounds and incorporating decreases when it necessary. The specific round for decreases varies for each size. Here is how to do the decreases. Knit one, slip slip knit. Continue to knit until the last 3 stitches. Knit 2 together. And finally, knit 1. This will decrease 2 stitches in total. Keep knitting until desired length and just remember that we will be adding an 8 cm 3 inches ribbing for the cuff. And here is the next tip. Mark each round where you make a decrease with a removable stitch marker. This makes it much easier to keep track of the next round where you need to decrease. You can also use a round counter, which is provided on the last pages of the knitting pattern. The sleeves are almost there and all that remains is the cuff. Just like for bodice bottom ribbing, we will use a 2x2 ribbing pattern for the cuff. 
However, a slight stitch count adjustment is needed to make it divisible by four. In my case, I'm decreasing three stitches with slip slip knit at the beginning and the middle and knit two together at the end. In the next round, switch to the 4.5 mm US 7 needles and knit in a 2x3 for 20 rounds. This is as simple as knitting 2 stitches followed by purling 2 stitches. Once the ribbon is complete, try it on. If the length is just right, proceed to cast off the stitches using your preferred method. I usually go for the standard cast off, but there are other techniques you can explore, like using a tapestry needle for a different finish. Now repeat the same process for the second sleeve. And voila, then both sleeves are done, your sweater is nearly ready. However, there is one more step, we need to wet block it. You might wonder why this is crucial. Well, let me show you. Take this beige sweater for instance. I re-knitted it five times during the design process. And here's how it looks after wet blocking. Quite a transformation, isn't it? After a 20 minute soak in lukewarm water and a bit of steam ironing, it's completely transformed. I will provide a link to a short video that demonstrates my wet blocking process. If you have reached the end of this tutorial, I would be thrilled to hear your thoughts. What did you enjoy? What could I do better? What you're excited to see in the future videos? If you like it, this, a thumbs up would make my day. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.